Morning, everyone. I'm delighted to be here today with Ali Al Hashimi, uh, the Chief Executive Officer of the RSAT Group at the first of the RSAT Knowledge Series discussions today in partnership with the Abu Dhabi Security Exchange. My name is John Sheldon, and I'm a partner at a company called Azurex, and we're at the DIFC in Dubai. Over the next 45 minutes, we will be in conversation with Ali to discuss the key issues and trends that are shaping the evolution of the space economy here in the UAE. Space industry is young, uh, but its importance to our global economy and the need that it fulfills in our consumers, communities and governments cannot be overstated. The past two decades have seen the sustained uh, developments of the UAE's own space sector uh, with major investments in capital and talent. The UAE has been boosting investment in science and technology, including key areas of the space economy. And today, the UAE can rightly claim several firsts when it comes to space exploration from the Arab world. In parallel, the country's intent to build a sovereign space economy continues at pace. Today, we will explore fundamentals of the industry, the evolution of the UAE satellite communications sector, and the positive trends that will be the force for innovation and growth as the industry continues to mature. Ali Al Hashimi, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, John. Can you start by describing the history and current situation and position of the UAE in the space industry? Yes, John. The UAE placed high importance in establishing sovereign space industry or space economy within the UAE. If you look at the history of the space industry within the UAE, in the year 2000, Thuraya launched their first satellite. And after that, we launched around 16 satellites, including the Khalifa Sat which was built by Marathi hands. And we were very proud of this initiative. Also, we established an institution that paved the way for space exploration, such as Mohammed Barash Space Center, which also established a long-term program in the sector. The space agency's establishment also is another important move to establish laws and regulation within the UAE. We have many notable firsts that the nation is very proud of, such as the Mars mission and the launch and the safe return of our champion, Hazza al-Mansouri, to, uh, to Earth. And we celebrated this highly within the nation. In addition to that, uh, we have many programs to come that we are very proud of. The Emirati Lunar Mission, the Emirati Interplanetary Mission, and also the Advanced Constellation of Earth Imagery Program that was announced uh, last year. And uh, all of that, Yasat for sure will play a direct or indirect role. So it is very good time for Yasat to be within the space economy. Can you share your perspectives also on the satellite communications ecosystem and the role of satellites in today's world and how that is evolving? Well, John, if you look at 1960 or before that, uh, the communication sector was mainly served by submarine cables. And these submarine cables uh, were limited in terms of reaching the last mile. Even if you use radio relays, the last mile became very expensive to do so. So it created an area of underserved or unserved and created what we call today the digital divide. So 3 billion people today, they are underserved or, or, or offline. And these unserved and underserved communities, these are in uh, places like Africa, here in the Middle East, Central and Southeast Asia. True. Right. So what happens after the 1960, we started to launch satellites for communication. And the innovation has started since then to build satellites that can bridge the gap of terrestrial network. Uh, today, for example, in Yasat, you would see that we have coverage areas in, in Africa, Middle East, Central of Asia, Southeast Asia, Europe, and Brazil. And mainly our customers today is underserved or, 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 non, or not served at all. So we are taking the pride of to do so, and that's why the satellite industry is always under the innovation to serve or, or advance these services to the customer, to serve them in many daily needs, such as remote education, remote healthcare, or remote financing. Uh, we're seeing also a lot of many new entrants into the satellite industry. For example, companies uh, from Silicon Valley in the USA, uh, new space startups, 
uh, as well as also national projects such as the proposed EU satellite constellation. What do you think is driving this new uh, interest and in funding in the space sector? Well, as I just mentioned, the, the, the satellite industry is very new. It's around 60 years old. And it was always under innovation and disruptor, which is very normal in this industry. However, the rise of Leo constellation uh, created two attractiveness, let's say, for this industry. The first trend is the launch cost becoming cheaper because Leo constellation require, require all, uh, continuous launching and satellites became more or smaller and technically more advanced and it has many let's say, uh, technical features that may make, make them cost effective. So what does that mean for YASAT in the future? It means our launching costs will be lower and our satellites will be smaller, lighter, more technically advanced and more suitable for our missions today. Also, this paved the way for us to look at two new industries which is very attractive for us, the direct-to-device the new phones, the new normal mobile phones, such as the iPhones and the Androids, will have a chipset today that can, will have a chipset in the future that can send and receive satellite signal, L-band or S-band. So this opened to us a new growth potential, and we can serve this market through partnership or through building small EU constellation that is not very expensive because the satellites again are becoming smaller and and the launch costs becoming cheaper. In addition to that, uh, the IoT became a reality right now because there is many advancement in the sensors and they are more cost effective to close the business model. A great example, our investment in ESAT Global, which we are building with them uh, sensors that can talk to the geosatellite and we can establish a, a link easily we will be able in the future to establish link easily with our geosatellites to serve the needs of many, many remote areas for, uh, for monitoring, let's say, the gas flow and oil and gas or education or remote education, I mean, or remote healthcare. Okay, thank you. And IoT, of course, for our viewers, IoT means Internet of Things, um, which is a, a very new technological sector. Uh, which segments of the satellite industry uh, do you see having the highest growth potential? Well, we have many segments today that has growth potential. So let me explain the MSS and the FSS first of all. We have the fixed satellite services, which offer uh, which, which the dish usually bigger from 20 centimeters to several meters, and it is fixed to the satellite, it has to crack the satellite. And, it, uh, and offer high data rate. And we have the mobile satellite services, the MSS, which uses L-band mainly, or S-band, and uh, it doesn't have to track the satellite, and it is mobile in nature. You can, and the great example is mobile satellite phones, or you can use it for small sensors, such as IoT sensors, or small data terminals that you can place it on above your car or on your ship. So, if we look at the industry verticals such as oil and gas, maritime, healthcare, education, and telecom, both MSS and FSS can serve them and, can, and we can obtain high growth potential from these markets. However, as I mentioned before, IoT and D2D is very attractive to us, especially we are the owner of the L-band. And as I mentioned, the L-band will be within the chipset and phones in the future, and we can reach to anybody who does not have a signal and establish a link for him where he can send an emergency signal or a chat or a video or something small using his phone in the future and the iot as i described before and and for the context of our viewers L-band is part of the radio spectrum that satellites use. Uh, so, for example, if you're trying to stream a, a video, say, on Netflix or some other c uh, similar streaming uh, uh, provider, you would use what they call K or Q-band sat uh, satellite spectrum. And if you're just exchanging a, a signal from a device or a sensor or sending a text message, you would use, for example, L-band, which is very narrow and can take only a limited amount of information. So that's just for the context of our, of our viewers. Uh, also, in the context of this evolving market, can you please tell us more about YASAT 
and your ambitions for the, com for the company. It is good to mention that YASA today have five satellites, and these five satellites cover 80% of the population. And our coverage, as I mentioned, is in Africa, Middle East, Southeast Asia, Central of Asia, Europe, and Brazil. And we serve them through many type of bands, uh, the fixed satellite services, which offer high data bandwidth and can offer backhauling, uh, broadband services, and let's say uh, high data type of services that telecom can use to bridge any, any terrestrial uh, need or uh, to bridge their terrestrial needs. And we have the mobile satellite services that can offer many applications such as IoT or D2D in the future. So we are very serious in our approach and our services for the market. Also, we have many joint ventures in the area. We have a joint venture in the Brazil with Hughes that offer broadband services. We have a joint venture in Africa with Hughes again to offer broadband services. And we have an equity investment with SES for broadcasting. So in our area of coverage, you can find that we are having multiple services in multiple sectors or industries, offering many innovative solutions and different type of solutions to different needs and different requirements. Uh, and then, of course, in 2024, we have Yarsat's new satellite, the Thuraya 4 Next Generation Satellite, also referred to as T4NGS. And this will be launched uh, uh, in 2024. How will this next generation satellite support Yarsat's growth strategy and capture new markets and customer segments? The Thuraya 4 is a very advanced satellite that will replace the Thuraya 2. So serving Middle East region mostly and Africa. And this satellite will be very advanced in terms of uh, flexibility and protocol. It uses the 5G protocol, which is the highest protocol available today. And uh, it is three times the capacity, which means you can get more customers. And when deployed, uh, 20 applications will be deployed with it. These applications will be for land, maritime, and aero applications. We start uh, we start our IoT services with it, or maybe before it, once we launch the, the applications. As I told you, we invested with ESAT Global. And ESAT Global will offer IoT platforms that can talk to geostationary satellites from day one. Yeah, so that made an investment in, in October 2022 last year. True. Okay. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of new capital being deployed in new orbits for satellite communications, such as in low Earth orbit, which is 160 to 2,000 kilometers altitude, and medium Earth orbit, which is at 20,000 kilometers altitude. Now, Yasat, its satellites, they traditionally operate in geostationary orbit, uh, which is 36,000 kilometers altitude. What's your view on using what they're now calling multi-orbit constellations for satellite communications? Is YASAT going to play a role in low and medium Earth orbits? Well, John, I think if you are a serious satellite player, multi-orbital strategy is the way forward. Just to put things in perspective, expert report shows that 80% of the usage of terrestrial and non-terrestrial network is usually used for data streaming or video streaming. Uh, and geostationary satellite today, and especially one satellite can cover one third of the world, or the whole world, you can cover it with three satellites if you place them equally apart. Uh, the geosatellites can offer extremely well services, well, good service when it comes, excellent service, at, at, at least if, when it comes to video streaming. So 80% of the usage today can be served very well with geostationary satellite. That being said, 20% of the other services require low latency, which is the LEO constellation is better because they are near to Earth. To put things in perspective, the LEO constellation has 0.04 seconds latency versus the geosatellite, which has 0.6 second latency which mean LEO constellation can offer services that the geosatellites cannot. These services such as cloud computing, 
such as cloud computing and gaming or some form of bank, uh, banking such as trading. Okay? So if, you, if we are serious, we have to bridge the gap of geostationary satellites by partnering with Leo Constellation in the future. This partnering could be a form of lease or, or of, of leasing the capacity or doing something more serious than that with them. So in short, geo satellites today can serve 80% of the need, but to bridge the gap, we have to partner with Leo Constellation to take the advantage of the low latency. And to be clear for viewers, latency essentially means the time it takes for a signal to basically travel between the terminal on Earth, whether that's a handheld device or a satellite dish, and the satellite in orbit. Uh, so just so we're clear for, for our viewers. Uh, 2022 saw a lot of uh, cons uh, consolidation in the sector. Uh, do you think we will see further merger and acquisition activity? Uh, and is this something YASAT would consider as part of its growth strategy? John, merger and acquisition when it comes to the satellite industry, it makes a lot of sense. First of all, to establish a satellite company from zero or let's say from the ground up, you have to gain a spectrum. You have to buy a spectrum or, or file for a spectrum. Finding a spectrum nowadays is nearly impossible because there are many satellite players who already find for the, spe for the spectrum. So if you need a KA or KU or C band, which is more available today, more the most, let's say, available spectrum, it will take you several years to find it, uh, minimum three to five or maybe 10 years to find the spectrum. And if you need a spectrum that is rarely available, such as the L band or the S band, it will take you, it will be nearly impossible to get these spectrums. So, 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 and if you launch a satellite, it will take you three years to four years to build a satellite. And with the ground segment cost and the spectrum cost and all of that, it is very expensive business. Or, or let's say it is very expensive and very time consuming business. Okay. So merger and acquisition makes sense because you acquire a spectrum from day one and you acquire satellites that is in service that bringing you revenue from day one. Uh, a great example, what Yasa did with Thuraya, we, once we acquired Thuraya, we acquired the L-band spectrum, which is very rare. We brought commercial revenue, around $80 million a year of commercial revenue, and we were able to, to, to gain a government contract for around $750 million. And once we launch the Thraya 4, we will start to recognize revenue around $50 million a year from the year 2025 and forward. So that tells you, this is a great example of how merger and acquisition works. So what happens also in the industry, just to put things in perspective, the Leo constellation, the rise of the Leo constellation expedited everybody's plans. So you will see Utilsat have uh, as have as having right now merger and acquisition with one web and Emer and Viasat and Emersat is, is another merger and acquisition that is happening in the market right now. So we will continue to see more merger and acquisition because the rise of Leo Constellation expedited everybody plans and today in the industry everybody is talking to everybody. Yes. Uh, what I also want to say is that Yasat today owns MSS Spectrum, which is the L-Band, Mobile Satellite Services Spectrum, which is the L-Band, Fixed Satellite, spe satellite Spectrum, which is the KA, the KU, the C-Band, and we have five fleet satellites, and we're launching the sixth one, which is the Thraya 4, which will be a replacement of the Thraya 2, and it is a generating revenue business and very profitable. We are cash rich. All of that make us very attractive to do a merger and acquisition in the industry. Right. And we are looking at it very seriously. Looking more broadly, uh, YASAT plays a key role in supporting the UAE's ambition to become a regional space hub. How do you see this role developing in the future? Well, YASAT plays an important role in the region through many factors. One of them, we have 150 inter service provider or internet service provider in the region. 
these service provider offer very important services to the rural areas, such as remote education, remote healthcare, and remote financing, uh, and many more than that. Uh, and uh, we support they support their SMEs uh, and and the entertainment of the households. So the through this is very important to offer these type of services to the rural areas and the, our area of coverage. As I told you, we cover 80% of the population and, and to have these type of services where people really need it, we are very proud. We are very proud to be able to do so. Another example, the natural disasters, recovery or emergency response that our system can offer a rapid response when there is a natural disaster that require a rapid response or emergency response immediately to ease the pain of, of people who are in need. Another example also, we established in our customer care, uh, the Saving Life Initiatives. If anybody called the customer care and he's distressed, we will do whatever it takes to help. So in 2022, we saved around 130 people lives and uh, a great example, uh, seven fishermen stranded on a ship in the Philippines where we had, they had no signal, were saved last year. They placed a call to the customer care and the customer care take the needful, did the needful, uh, the right action to, to offer them the right emergency response. Other than that, which is I'm very proud of, we established the first academic, uh, let's say, program within Khalifa University and uh, with partner with partnering with the space agency to establish the first academic program where the student can come and participate in the life cycle and building CubeSat to build, to study it and to launch it and to establish a service. We had two missions, the, 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 the VabiSat and the MySat one. Both were very successful and very good examples of what the students can do in the lab uh, through research and development. And we're gonna go to the phase two. Phase two will be more advanced satellite. And we take it to many phases until we establish a real capability within the UAE where we can really build satellites that can take real missions from the ground up with, where we own all the IPs. Uh, another ex example also, we are exploring building up, upstream satellite manufacturing components such as modem. And we are in the future. We after we starting manufacturing the modem, we will look at satcoms and other satellite manufacturing components that is in the upstream area. So it's rather ambitious uh, uh, program there. Uh, moving on to the uh, subject of space environments, uh, space debris is a very particular concern for the global satellite industry. Uh, what is YASAT doing to ensure the sustainability of space? We take space sustainability very seriously. That's why within YASAT, we, our procedure or policy uh, is aligned with zero debris policy. So we invested the right manpower, the right uh, technology investments, the right service partner to offer us the guidelines of how not to cause any debris or to add any, uh, anything to the problem. But it's good to mention that most of our fleet today is geostationary and the debris problems is mainly today at the LEO constellation or the, the, the LEO segment uh, of the industry. However, we are taking it very seriously. And again, we take any shortcut and we are operate under zero debris policy. And also on the subject of space sustainability and ESG, uh, what about YASA and Earth observation? Does YASA expect to play a role in Earth observation in the coming months and years? Well, John, if you look at YASA, we are the main provider of critical infrastructure when it comes to the UAE government. And we can expand the critical infrastructure easily to cater for Earth observation applications. And this will be cost effective. We believe it will be cost effective for the UAE government. So we are looking at this very closely with our partners within the UAE to see how to expand these services and uh, establish, uh, let's say, a cost-effective methodology for these services. And also we are talking to many partners within the UAE of how to develop these services commercially 
and sell to the international market. It's also good to mention that through our consultancy services, uh, we obtain uh, various knowledge or, or, or expertise in this segment. Uh, now, earlier you mentioned that there's uh, about 3 billion people around the world who are either unserved by uh, the uh, you know, communications revolution or underserved. In other words, they, they receive very spotty service. Uh, can you speak more about the vital role played by communication satellites in bridging this digital divide for people? Well, as I told you, the, especially the geostationary satellites, can one satellite can cover one, one third of the Earth. And if we've placed three equally apart, we can cover the whole earth. And luckily today in Yasat, we cover 80% of the populations. And that's 80% of the global population. Of the global population, yeah. exactly. So today we are very proud that we have school programs that Yaklik help mm -hmm. to establish these programs in the schools. Countries such as Ghana, Eastern Cape Town, Zimbabwe, Kenya, and Nigeria. Also, we run uh, the digital connectivity in many countries to help the SMEs and to establish normal even entertainment in the household yeah. and, uh, uh, and to advance their daily lives. Okay. Uh, and finally, to round off this fascinating discussion, Ali, uh, given your role at the UAE's premier satellite communications operator, what message would you wish to leave with our viewers today? Well. It is the right time to invest in Yasat. Right. The industry is expanding as mm -hmm. we speak, and there is and Yasat is very attractive com company today. We have a strong cash holding, we have a strong cash flow, we have the right spectrum and the right technology to make us very attractive for merger and acquisition, mm -hmm. or to or to expand our services. Uh, we play a vital role in the UAE. Mm -hmm by offering critical infrastructure to the UAE yeah. or to the UAE government. Also, we have the support of our founding shareholders, Mubadala, who owns 60% of the company. Mm -hmm. Other than that, uh, we will always leverage our technology talent and partnership to expand parallelly our both services, that is commercial or government. And finally, I want to emphasize again that we were going to grow this company in the IoT and D2D sectors and many other sectors if the opportunity comes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank Ali you. Al Hashimi, the CEO of the RSAT Group, thank you very much for a fascinating discussion and for sharing your valuable perspectives with us. Thank you very much. Uh, I think, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've learned a, a great deal today, and I think the highlights of our discussion can be summed up uh, in that YASAT plays a central role, I think we can all agree, in the UAE space program and its development, and that also YASAT is certainly among the top global rank of uh, satellite communication providers around the world, uh, and that YASAT is also a very bold and uh, disruptor, if you will, within the market, because it's actively pioneering new technologies and markets where other companies perhaps are not. And then lastly, YASAT, I think we can all agree, uh, makes a critical difference in the lives of people around the world. Uh, Thank you very much uh, for joining us. YASAT has a busy and exciting month ahead with the participation of YASAT Government Services and Thuraya at IDEX in Abu Dhabi uh, next week. And then capping off the month of February will be the release of YASAT's end of year results, which marks the conclusion of an eventful year for the firm and the start of renewed activity in 2023. So to our audience, thank you very much for joining us for the first of these YASAT, uh, YASAT Knowledge Series discussions, and we look forward to bringing you more developments and insights on the space and satellite communications sector to you. Again, thank you and goodbye.